Why are there so many different interpretations of the Bible? It's commonly claimed today that the Bible cannot be understood. At least, it cannot be understood alike. And there are tens of thousands of different religious organizations who believe they have the truth, even though they all practice their faiths differently from the others. But how can there possibly be this many different interpretations of the same book, of the Bible? Can they all be accurate? Let's investigate this question during the course of our study. And first, as you read the pages of God's Word, you notice, among many other things, that the Bible makes some claims about itself. And as you investigate some of these claims and consider them alongside the fact that there are many different interpretations of the Bible, you should recognize that these two things do not harmonize with each other. Therefore, let's investigate some reasons that are not to blame for all the different interpretations of the Bible. First, it is not because God has given more than one law to govern us. God has only given one universal law that mankind is accountable to today. That is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Consider the fact that Paul stated in Romans chapter 1, verse 16, that the gospel of Christ is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. And as such, there are not many different systems of law for people to live under today so as to justify multiple interpretations of the Bible. Instead, in Ephesians 4, in verses 1 through 6, Paul said that there is only one faith. And that one faith, that one system of acceptable religious belief, teaching, and practice is among the things which ought to unite us rather than divide us. If God had given more than one law to govern us, then it would be reasonable for there to be different interpretations of God's Word. However, God's Word claims that there is only one faith that all mankind is accountable to. You and all mankind must simply follow that one faith. Next, it is not because God's Word cannot be understood. Though there are some today who claim that God's Word cannot be understood by a common person, God's Word claims that it can. For instance, in Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 4, Paul told the Ephesians, When you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Similarly, Ephesians 5 and verse 17 says, Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. If God's Word could not be understood, then it would be, it would be reasonable for there to be different interpretations of what is written. However, God's Word claims to be understandable. You can know exactly what God's will is for you if you study its message. Next, it's not because God's Word is incomplete. Jude wrote in Jude chapter 1 and verse 3, Beloved, while I was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation, I found it necessary to write to you, exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith which was once for all delivered to the saints. The gospel of Jesus Christ, the revelation of God's new covenant, has been revealed once for all time. There are no amendments for God to add to his revelation. If God's word was incomplete, then it would be reasonable for there to be different interpretations of what is written. However, God's word claims to be complete. There is no further revelation God will add to the things that have been written in the pages of his word. Next, it is not because God's word contradicts itself. God's word's perfect. It contains, contains absolutely no flaws, errors, or inconsistencies. In Psalm 19 and verse 7, it says that the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul, and that the testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. James 1 verse 25 describes the gospel of Jesus Christ as the perfect law of liberty. If God's word contradicts itself, then it would be reasonable for there to be different interpretations of what is written. However, God's word is perfect. There is nothing that it contains that is not 100% true. Next, there are not many different interpretations of the Bible because God's word allows for multiple interpretations. Though there are some points of difficulty in the Bible's message, all mankind can be united 
in the doctrines and practices that are outlined within the pages of God's Word. In fact, God demands unity among those who will follow Him. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 10, for instance, commands, Now I plead with you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. If God's word allowed for multiple interpretations of his word, then it would be reasonable to expect such. However, God commands that his followers be perfectly united. The only way that is possible is if he has given us a message that allows us to be united. Otherwise, he has commanded something of us that is not possible. So, the various contradictions and differences in interpretations are absolutely not due to these factors. There is no problem with God's revelation of his will to mankind in the pages of the Bible. This then leaves us leaves all the fault with mankind. In 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 16, for instance, it says that Paul wrote some things that were hard to understand, which untaught and unstable people twist to their own destruction as they do also the rest of the scriptures. Mankind, according to 2 Timothy 2 and verse 15, has the responsibility to be diligent to rightly interpret the scriptures, even when those scriptures may be more difficult, though not impossible, to understand. There are a number of ways, then, in which mankind has caused God's word to be twisted, misinterpreted, and misapplied. First, sometimes, the way that we understand some passages and biblical concepts can become distorted because of ideas that have been ingrained in our minds. Sometimes these ideas come from our parents. Sometimes they come from the ways in which we were raised. Sometimes they come from our cultures. Sometimes they come from the ways in which we've been educated. They can come through many different sources. And then, when we study the Bible, we can be guilty of interpreting what God says through our own personal worldviews rather than allowing God to shape our worldviews. Second, Sometimes, we can be guilty of distorting Bible passages, knowingly or unknowingly, in a way so that they fit our own ideas and opinions. And then opinions are often bound on others, forcing them to accept our opinions. However, the Bible says in Proverbs 14 and verse 12 that there is a way which seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. Therefore, we must not be wise in our own opinions, according to Romans 12 and verse 16, or place our confidence in the opinions of other men. Third, sometimes we can be guilty of placing more emphasis on man's traditions, even his religious traditions, than on what God's Word actually teaches. In fact, some churches, in some churches, some tradition is viewed as being just as authoritative as the Bible. However, in Matthew chapter 15 and verses 3 through 9, Jesus condemned some religious people because they violated God's commandment by holding to man-made traditions. Fourth, sometimes we can fail to accept the truth that God's Word teaches because we simply don't want to change. So whenever we read of something God wants us to do, we distort God's message to fit what we want. Or we can also desire to justify someone else. Maybe it's a family member. Maybe it's a friend or someone else, and we can be guilty of do doing the same thing. For instance, in 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verses 3 and 4, Paul warned Timothy, who was a preacher, that a time would come when individuals would not endure sound doctrine. They wouldn't like what true gospel teaching required of them. And according to their own desires and because of their itching ears, that is, they just wanted to be told something that was pleasing to them. They would find so-called teachers to tell them what they desired to, to hear. Thus, they would turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. Many individuals today do not want to study God's Word to find out what they're doing wrong and what they need to change. Instead, they study God's Word to listen to preachers only to learn what they desire to know. Fifth, sometimes folks are guilty of not being diligent to search out what the Bible teaches for themselves. 
They'll only listen to what some people tell them the Bible says and what the Bible means. Therefore, many people only ever know what the Bible says by what their parents or teachers or preachers or whoever says without searching the truth out for themselves. So rather than being guilty of this, we should imitate the example of the Bereans in Acts chapter 17 and verse 11, who searched the scriptures daily to find out whether they were being taught the truth or not. And then sixth, sometimes false teachers assist folks in coming to false conclusions about God's word. There are many warnings about false teachers and false prophets in the Bible. These individuals claim to speak the things of God, but actually teach things that don't, do not originate with God. For instance, Jesus warned about false prophets in Matthew chapter 7, verses 15 through 20. Peter warned about such in 2 Peter chapter 2, and verses 1 through 3. And then in Galatians chapter 1, and verses 6 through 9, Paul warned that those who would about those who would pervert the gospel of Christ and urge that no other gospel be accepted besides the one true gospel. He even said that all false gospels must be rejected no matter who preaches them, even if it would originate with an apostle of Christ or an angel of God. Therefore, you must determine never to listen to any false teacher, no matter who is teaching you. So the bottom line is that there are a large number of things that can get in our way of understanding the Bible accurately and understanding it alike, even in addition to the things discussed here. But we can be sure that God is not one of those things. So as we conclude our study thinking about why are there so many different interpretations of the Bible we need to recognize that it is possible to understand the Bible alike. God is not the reason for the many different interpretations of the Bible, and he doesn't approve of them either. There is still only one faith that is revealed once for all time in the pages of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And according to Philippians 1 and verse 27, he expects mankind to be diligent, to stand fast, in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel of Jesus Christ.